Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the gun stream. Um, we're going to be going for, I think, Coach, you said you had about 19 minutes, right? Uh, 90 minutes? Uh, no, I, I, I would prefer to keep this under an hour. I okay. prefer to keep well, it under half an hour, but, you know, whatever. We'll uh, see how long you can I go can, then, I, I guess. I committed to, to this debate, and uh, that was a bad decision on my part because there's <laughs> nothing for me to gain. That's you know? the one thing we'll and, agree on here. Yeah, and there's nothing for, uh, you know, there, there's no, uh, like I said, there's nothing for me to gain and, and frankly, nothing for me to lose either. But I, I, I think your combined point. audiences will enjoy it, but hey, who knows? Uh, okay, go ahead. Okay. Hey, so, that's ladies Jimmy. and gentlemen, how's it going? You, oh, give me one moment. Give I've, me one moment. I haven't um, killed myself are... yet. Still hanging in there. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I would thought you were going to kill yourself after you talked to Roush. Uh, what's no not Roush? Vouch? Vouch. After you killed you, after you talked to Vouch, I mean, he handed you her, your head, didn't he? Which conversation are we talking about? The one that he posted on his uh, channel. Uh, yeah, he he made you look like a spurgy retard. Quite frankly, it was pretty funny. Wow. Well, you'd definitely be a good judge of that. So I'll go ahead and take that a take a second look at that one. Okay. Oh, come on now. Come on. You were like hysterical practically. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty irritated. He made some pretty dumb claims about me. And I'd just seen him in person like a few days earlier, and he didn't seem to have anything like that to say there. So it was pretty upsetting. No, you were freaking the fuck out. You know, you were like completely losing your shit. And it was totally obscure as to why you were so angry with the guy. No, I think pretty much everybody followed along. It's probably because you're an outsider and you don't really know what the conversations are about. But that's okay. I'm, I'm glad to have your perspective. Well, what was interesting was that it really seemed to get under your skin, the fact that he pointed out that you're, like, very well off. Well, yeah, because it was irrelevant to any of the points we were making, and he's historically been more well off than me, so it seemed like a pretty strange point to make. Oh, so you, you leftist guys, like, you know, you fight as to who has more wealth than the other? That's pretty weird. That's pretty capitalist. That's not really what we're fighting about at all, firstly. Secondly, I am a capitalist, so I don't uh -huh. know if that's supposed to be an attack against my economic well, position. Well, no, or... I mean, like, you're a, you're a leftist, right? I mean, you're on what the left. What do you mean by leftist? See, you do that. That's Wait, hold on. Like I'm sorry. Let me explain. No, 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 no. Hold on. I'm so sorry. Let me explain for the audience, okay? Because I know that you're politically literate. So when some people on the internet say leftist, they mean literally like socialist or communist. I am a mm -hmm. liberal, okay, broadly speaking. This encompasses both mm -hmm. Democrats and Republicans, but I'm a capitalist. So if mm -hmm. someone on the internet asks me if I'm a leftist, I have to ask, do you mean am I a socialist or do you mean I'm like a Democrat or a progressive? I am like a Democrat or progressive. You'd call me a leftist in the United States, but for people online that talk about like socialism and Marxism and shit, I would not be considered a leftist. I'd be considered a liberal. So that's why I asked what you meant when you asked if I was a leftist, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, that's one of the tactics that you use. Like, it's like one of your characteristics. It's literally tactics. not a tactic. It's called clarification. Yes, I'm just it's trying to figure out what tactic. you're asking you me. Just about in every conversation. It's not a debate tactic. I'm just trying to figure out what yes, you're talking it about. It's, it's retreat and pivot. So okay? when you when you ask me if I'm a leftist and I'm not sure what you mean, what am I supposed to ask? Well, actually, what you don't want to talk about is the fact that you're rich. That I, you're I talk really about rich. how much money I make all the time. You're just you swing yeah, and a miss and, and so a swing I and a miss. Ask, you know. <laughs> Yeah. What about you as a left, as a rich leftist? And automatically you do the the typical. What do you mean by leftist? Which is retreat and pivot to For, something. Firstly, else. I'm not retreating. This is I own. That you do all the time. No, no. Stop. Can you stop doing this weird shit? So I own every position what I have. I don't retreat shit? from. I'm just pointing out how you debate your debating it's... style. It's not a debate style. I'm asking mm -hmm. you for clarification on a term because you're using a word that means different things to different people. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's if, what you do. What you do is yes, you I do. That what I do is I clarify terms, and then people like you that don't really know what you're talking about get very upset else. about it because you realize that you don't know what you're talking about. So when you say that no, I'm a leftist, like I have to figure out if you mean if I'm a socialist or if I'm a Democrat. Being... Okay. Yes, that's okay. See, this is typical destiny. You retreat and pivot to something else. <clears throat> okay, so say, we have uh, hosts here that I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either of these hosts. Say, uh, what do you mean by human being? So to pivot I, I don't. I don't know what. what well, if we were having a conversation about address. what human beings were, I would probably ask you for a no, clarification I'm being on that hypothetical too. Hypothetical, and you're you're acting in bad faith. That's the problem with you, Destiny, that you can, are. Can I get some host input on this? Was it unfair for me to ask him what he meant by leftist when I wasn't sure if he meant like a, a U.S. liberal it's versus a like a socialist? strategy that you use all the time. It, it Boring, seems reasonable. reasonable. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. It, it's so, reasonable, but it's also just pointless. We should just uh, move on to the main topic. Sure, we can move on, but like, just so you know, like, 
We're setting no, the so tone the for the debate where he constantly accuses me. I'm he concerned. constantly accuses me of like it's, it's debate tactics, destiny. and I'm That's just trying I'm to have like a a conversation to figure out what words he's using. But he constantly asks me like destiny. if I'm doing debate Steven. tactics. Stephen, calm down now. Let other people talk. Okay, that's how it works. The reason that we're having this conversation, as far as I'm concerned, is to dissect destiny and figure out what makes him tick. I and figure out the if you want to know that, that you can visit my YouTube about. channel. I talk about myself all the time. I don't know why I would need no, you no, here no, no, to no. You, dissect you project me. Project onto your audience what you want them to see, but I want to see the real destiny, the true destiny. I've I want to see streaming. His organs spread out I've on been my streaming for table. over ten <laughs> years, my dude. I don't think there's anything uh-huh. hidden about me from my audience. Although I'm flattered, you think I could keep an act up for so long. Well, what's interesting to me is the motivation for your debates because you don't care about finding the truth. You just care about winning the debate. You want to aggrandize yourself by way of debating. If that was true, That's- then I would probably find a community that circle jerks me more, like most of your guys' communities, and I wouldn't have changed any of my major policy positions Whoa. over the past five years, which I do, absolutely. I con- I'm constantly evolving my positions to things that I think sound better. No, no, you're not interested in finding the truth. You're just interested in coming across as the smartest guy in the room. No, I think that you mistake maybe you not knowing what you're talking about when you talk to me as me trying to be the smartest guy in the room. But like, I think most of my conversation is pretty reasonable. There's plenty of times where I'm talking to like really well-read people that are way more intelligent than me on a given area. So I gather Mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. So what you do usually in in your debates, quote unquote debates, because it's not really debate. It's it's for you. It's what you want to do is put down other people. And so you automatically enter into any conversation with anybody with a bad faith approach. For instance, in this conversation that we just started having, you immediately said that I don't know what I'm talking about. I do know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you, Stephen. I'm talking about destiny. And I'm I glad that at least the hosts were here to side with me on my clarifying question. So, about. and I'm saying that you go into every conversation with no effort, no no skirt, desire skirt, to oh find mother. the truth. You just want to um, aggrandize yourself. That's why it's a misnomer. I'm, I'm actually, I'm really curious. Destiny. What what position do you think I hold that I hold because I'm not interested in the truthfulness of it? I just hold it to fight with people or whatever. All of them. <laughs> can, you name, can you name a single position that you think that I hold sure, that I can't defend? Sure, Like mm-hmm. Like yesterday when you were talking with Vouch, right? Okay. And you like had your little freak out, yeah? I mean, you basically... So you didn't answer my question. Agreed. I'm going to restate it again for you. I don't know if you just don't yeah, have an I, answer. I know. You pretty much agreed on just about everything. But the thing is... So see, my question you, is, what position do I hold that you think well, I can't defend? Listen, that I just you, hold to, like, you, irritate you, people? Okay, fine. Well, Pain this city. again, this proves my point that you try to uh, uh, steamroller people. That's another one of your debating tactics by talking really fast and just steamrolling. I haven't been talking saying. really fast. So, so you've been talking over me point. and you've been like I'm, I'm de- proselytizing I'm for the entire conversation. And, and see, see, you're talking about how I'm proselytizing. What am I proselytizing? I'm not proselytizing. You're anything. trying I'm to claim saying, that you've got what? some like psychological analysis of me. Every time we talk, you're like, I've got your number. But you can't answer a simple question like what position do you think I hold that I don't genuinely believe in? Oh, all right. of them. I answered your question. You can't man. say all of them. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> because because your positions, you don't take them up in order to arrive at the truth. Can you give me an example of a position, position that I hold? to the truth and you talk to somebody else to see what they think and thereby either either come closer to his position or have him come closer to your position in your quest for truth. You're not interested in okay, that. Okay, can I appeal to the host to make him answer this question? Can you have him, t- or you guys can ask him, because I can't get through this guy. He's like fucking obsessed with me. Can you ask him what position I hold that he thinks I'm not truthful about or that I hold where I'm not trying to seek the truth? I'm so curious. What position do you hold, nigger? Oh, shit. Yeah, chill, please. Oh, what was that? Yeah, we're on Sorry. Uh, uh, it's okay. like... I think Destiny oh, just wants a more concrete uh, point to debate on. Yeah, you know, no, no, yeah, yeah. I think sure. <laughs> Destiny <laughs> doesn't want this conversation, okay? I want, you're not I'll, having I'll, a conversation. You're just preaching. Yeah, at me like we're you having a conversation do. about you. It's, I'm interested in you. A conversation is a two-way back and forth. You're just talking at me right now because you won't answer a question. Okay, so uh, let me ask you a question. No, then, you I'm still haven't answered my your, question. Your you know... If you're a rich leftist, don't Wait, you have the I'm obligation gonna... to pay more taxes? And if the taxes are not high enough, shouldn't you be giving more of your money to like worthy causes? I would How love to answer that question money? for you right after you answer my first one. I'll run down I that hole if you want. I think he's yeah. raising his point as a question here. This is the point he believes that you do not have concrete opinions. 
Okay, sure. I think that wealthy people should pay higher taxes, but I don't think an individual needs to be making a higher contribution that's going to be an extreme detriment to himself if every other person isn't forced to do so as well. Much the same that I might say, maybe we really? should drive less. Okay, that, that's I'm pretty to, I'm, I'm, trying to, you. I'm trying to give my explanation. Much the same. Oh, like, well, I'm trying to point out the fact that it's really uncharitable, and I'm just steamrolling you the way that you steamrolled me before. <laughs> So nothing that I've said is uncharitable, and I'm not steamrolling. I'm just trying to concisely answer your question, right? So no, because the thing is, see, when I was speaking before, you were steamrolling me and not answering. I know ne- you are you always steamrolling people. Giggles. Do you understand that you're projecting right now? Why don't right you now? give more money to worthy causes, the worthy causes that you claim to believe? So I don't pay more taxes individually because it would represent a harm to myself without any net benefit because me contributing tax funds alone won't accomplish any of the policy positions. Oh, so other accomplish. people should contribute, but uh, little Stephen Bonnell shouldn't? Is that how it works? No. What I'm saying is that everyone should contribute, me included, but I wouldn't expect any individual to contribute if everybody else wasn't forced to as well. So you're basically saying that you don't believe in your own principles. You say that the taxes should be raised and more money should be given to poor people and whatnot, but you're not going to do it. That's what you're saying. You're a hypocrite. <laughs> All right? Like all leftists, you're a hypocrite. I, I don't and now know that you if have I some can money, explain, you don't want to give any of it. I don't know if I can explain my position any more simply than I already have. I, I have to assume that you're just trying oh, to go yeah, for gotchas, just, but you don't. You're, you're just a big brain, and I'm just a, a little pea can brain. I, I know, does I my, did my explanation make sense? Can I, can I appeal to the host on this again? Did my explanation make sense, or do I need to explain this more? <laughs> No, you're uh, right. about halfway through it, but uh, you know, I think I got the general just. Yeah, sure. So, like, basically, yeah, so like, I would argue that, like, for climate change, we should probably curb the amount of energy we use, right? We we should reduce right. our usage of energy to, to combat this climate pivoting. change. It's How, pivoting away however, from the money issue. I w- well, it's the, the money same. issue really gets under your skin because you know that you're a hypocrite. You ain't, or you earn a great deal of money, and how do you earn that money? By Twitch, right? You're on Twitch. That's where you get your big bucks, right? Hello. I think well, well, I, there's know. literally no point for me to respond. You're just going to keep screaming at me. Like, no, I'm is... asking you. you no, no, you're not asking me a question. Twitch. You're waiting for a quick yes or no so that you can keep preaching. Like, nothing that you're well, saying is you anything. Earn that... your you're, big not, you're not. Respo- you're not responding to anything that I've said so far. Do you think that if you personally believe in a cause, do you think that you should pursue that cause at great harm to yourself if you have zero chance of accomplishing said cause? Well. I'm a right wing. Can you fascist, answer that question or not. yes or no? So can you, obviously wait, wait, wait. not. Can you, <laughs> but you, okay. you're like wait, 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 wait. If you say no to that, I say no to that as well. Helping people out, so you should be giving your big bucks from Twitch to the poor. Why aren't I you? Think you you're, I think you I think what's happening is I think you're too scared to engage on any of my points because you know that you can't have mm. a conversation with mm-hmm. me. So you have like this pre-written dialogue that you just like to spit out anytime we talk, so that you feel like you're getting the upper hand on me. But like it's pretty obvious that you're not responding to a single thing i've said so far like these are easy questions like not we haven't even gotten any of the hard topics yet and you can't respond to anything i've said so far it's kind of strange i don't know why you would agree to do this conversation if you're not capable of having it basically saying that Holy you're a hypocrite shit, by dressing it up in, now, in, in, in like highfalutin and fast and loose talk no i'm not I, I wouldn't expect any <laughs> i wouldn't expect any individual to make contributions that harm themselves and don't accomplish their ends like, that's a mm-hmm. position I'm wholly consistent on. I say the same thing when Democrats tell Jeff Bezos to single-handedly pay his, his workers more without passing legislation to make it happen. That's dumb as fuck. I take this position with literally every single actor in the economy, with every single individual in the United States or in the world. It's a really easy position to have. This isn't even so a hard you're, argument. you're big bucks. Just to, just to go back to the point that I'm interested in. You make your big money on Twitch, right? Yeah, generally. Yeah? Why are you on Twitch? Because for a variety of reasons. I mean, it's a job that I enjoy. It pays the bills. No, but why in Twitch, not on YouTube? You're, you're much more a Twitch guy than a YouTuber, right? Because I started on Twitch like 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Why did you start on Twitch? I don't know what, what you're... Can you just ask the question? I don't know what you're trying to get at. I'm asking the question, why did you start on Twitch? I'm not really interested in like your psycho... Like how far are we going to go back here? Like I was born in 1988. That's when everything started. Like... Yeah, but I'm just asking Topeka. a simple question. Why do you, I can answer the question of why I started on YouTube. Can you answer the question of why you started on Twitch? Sure. A long time ago, a friend showed me that there were Korean people that had some software that allowed them to live stream video games they played. I think I'm pretty entertaining, so I thought I would live stream my video game play as well. And that's how I started on, on I think it was live stream or Ustream like 11 years ago. But, but yeah, 11 years ago, how old would you be? Like 20? Um, about like 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and, and Twitch was always like a gaming platform. I don't use Twitch personally, so I, yeah, I'm Twitch asking. Twitch was a you know, gaming I'm, website. I'm that is correct. Well, it was Justin TV, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and the the audience there is predominantly children, right? Um, it depends on what like you mean by children. I mean, like, yeah, like adolescents, I guess, anywhere from 16 to 25. Yeah, like children, because, you know, we usually call people under the age of, you know, 18 children. I don't know if the so, majority of the user base is under 18. I think it was like 16 to 25 men is like the, the main demographic. I don't know what the strata is of like 16 to 18 year olds or under 18s, but... Yeah, because I wanted to ask you something. And it, look, uh, this is going to be rather uncomfortable, but I have to ask it. You know, I've seen on like 8chan and, and, and other boards that talk about uh, YouTubers that obsess on YouTubers. Some of them obsess, obsess on me, which is pretty funny. Uh, but a lot of them show pictures of you with like, you know, prepubescent fans. And the, the pictures are kind of weird. What's that all about? There has never been an accusation against me and no, a I didn't ask fan in my entire life. I, you I'm, realize I'm that asking. YouTube has a younger audience than I do, right? Like, you know that uh, YouTube's audience is younger than Twitch. Like, Well, my uh, audience, they're all adults. You know? No, they're I, not. I, I will bet you a million dollars that I know they're not. I can show you right now. They're not all adults. I know they're not. They're not. You're, they're not. Yes, You're they lying. Are. Okay, go ahead and post a screenshot. We'll wait of your YouTube sure. demographics. Sure. Yeah, no problem. Hang on. Let me just... Uh, oops. Oops. Sorry about that. I want to see where all of them are adults. Uh, no, 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 not all of them. I'm saying oh, that okay, okay, okay. fraction okay. are under oh, okay, the age okay. of 18. And your, your audience, uh, I'm kind of curious about it, right? Hang on a second. I'm going to age and gender. Um, 0 0.3 are between the ages of 13 and 17. And the rest is spread out between 18 and 65 plus. Uh, how do I... Wait, where's the screenshot? I just want to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, okay, well, this is what I'll do. Hang on a second. Let me just take the screenshot. I'm assuming Coke is on his phone. Uh, no, I'm on my uh, my laptop. Hang on. Okay. And I'm going, am I? Well, Where's the chat for while this? we're waiting for that, I actually wanted to get this in. Uh, if people want to ask questions to the people debating, you can go to streamlabs.com slash gunstream, G-U-N-T, stream. <laughs> And, uh, we don't have a streamlabs. Yeah. We, stream we have a gun stream streamlabs, motherfucker. We don't have a streamlabs. We do now. Oh. Uh, okay, there it is. Just took it. Zachariah, I sent it to you. I think I sent it to you by accident. Can you just? No, it's in the it's in the main chat. Oh, okay. yeah, we can all see it. Now. Okay, so here's mine. My 13 to 17 old is 1.2 percent of my views. Yeah, well, I asked you the, the question, what's up with those pictures of you with, like, prepubescent boys? That's kind of weird. I, I don't know what pictures of me with pre... I don't know where you're going with this. Like, I sometimes I pose with be, fans like, for pictures. In weird ways. Are you There's talking about Are you pictures. talking about the photoshopped picture with my hand is on the guy's dick? You know that's not a real picture, right? I don't know. I'm asking. It's not a real picture. Oh, my God. <laughs> You, you think the picture of me that, that where I'm like three feet tall and I've got my hand on that Asian guy's dick in the Korean barbecue wasn't you think that's a real picture? I don't know. I'm asking. It's it's not. Because that's a tactic you use in debate. You're grabbing people in the dick. <laughs> that that are automatically cast the person in the worst light and they have to they're forced to on the back foot to defend themselves even though that was never their position. You I mean, I can defend time. myself against claims of pedophilia. Like, I've been in this industry for a long time. And there's never been, like, an accusation that I've, like, abused a minor or any shit like that. This is a total fabrication yeah, of people sure? on your 100% sure. Prove, it, prove, 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 prove it, that there prove are no prove accusations no against, accusation me? against you. To be fair, that is asking to prove a negative. Yeah, I'm how can sure. I even do that? You don't, you yeah, don't well, think that you don't think that if there if there, if there was the something time. credible against me you don't all think that you guys would have more than just a photoshopped picture of you me in a restaurant? You use that tactic all the time, Stephen. I'm not interested in whether you're fucking little boys or not. That's your business and, and the police's, <coughs> frankly. But what I am interested in this conversation is pointing out how you debate people and okay. you put them on the back foot just like that all the time and then oblige <laughs> them to try to defend something that is never their position. Or put them in the position of having to prove a negative. You is do this that what it looks like time. when you have like destiny PTSD? Is this that's what it feels like? This is like really weird, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, it's really weird because you know it's true, and the people who listen to you know it's true. 
I'm the only son of a bitch who's pointed it out to you, maybe. But it's true. You act in bad faith. Everything you ever, ever, every interaction you ever had of it is always in bad faith because you're not interested in finding the truth. You find you're interested in aggrandizing yourself because you feel, uh, 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 for lack of a better word, you feel small. And because of it, you know, you try to aggrandize yourself at the expense of others. Do you ever worry that and you might be fact. projecting like an uncomfortable and you amount want me to, in these to, conversations? To go through your 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 strategies for it for your bad bad faith quote unquote debating. You you know retreat and pivot. You straw man, but the way you do it is actually kind of subtle because what you do is it's sort of like a balsa man. It's sort of like the shape of the person, but what you do is that you take their position and subtly shift it with a couple of words to put it into an extreme position that you can defeat, and he knows it, and he freaks out trying to shore up a position that is a reasonable position, but which you have shifted ever so slightly. So it's not quite a strong man, but it's in a way that renders the guy's argument uh, moot, and you win. And you do that all the time. Do you think yeah. that you're making good points right now? Do you, do you really think that? Yeah, I do. I'm pointing out who you are, buddy. Okay. Well, I don't think there's really any reason to continue on with this right now. I think we, let's go back a little bit. Um, yeah. So you go back to Twitch quick. So Twitch is owned by Jeff Be Bezos, mm -hmm. um, who you mentioned before. So let's connect the two points there. Do you think that working for Twitch um, is in a way helping support Jeff Bezos? So you, I would assume you believe uh, protect, uh, uh, creates unethical business practices, right? Would you agree with that? When it comes to unethical business practices, I think that these are things that should be regulated and legislated by Congress. I don't think that you should expect an individual business owner to step up and treat their employees right. This is an unreasonable demand to place on a firm that's trying to remain competitive. I think that if you want them to act in a certain way, you have to enforce that via legislation from Congress. So, for instance, if we expected Bezos to pay his workers more, I would expect to see Congress, like, go ahead and actually pass, like, a higher minimum wage or some sort of protection for workers or some sort of strengthening for unions. I wouldn't expect Bezos out of the good of his heart to just start paying people more that doesn't make any sense all right give a response to that crp i don't give a shit <laughs> i don't care <laughs> okay. all right Let, let's i think get that to the problem is the problem, that problem no the, the problem there has nothing to do with jeff bezos being a rich guy the problem has to do with the fact that uh, the neoliberal paradigm of uh, allowing monopolies and oligopolies to flourish is the reason that we're in the hole that we're in Wait, actually, I'm so curious, Red Pill. Why is it that at 51 years old, you only date women between the ages of 18 and 25? You don't think that's more pedophilia? Hotter. They're less complicated. So at 51, you would date an 18-year-old girl? I do. So that's that's a pretty big yikes for me, man. Holy shit. Okay, sorry. Keep going. What are we talking about? Oligarchies? Do it. That's not my problem. It's your problem, though, isn't it? If you can't keep a girl's attention, I, you what have am I supposed no to idea what I can or cannot do. Don't cringe too hard Oof, here, bud. Just... I think I have a pretty fair idea of what you can't do, buddy. And you can't get the interest of uh, a nineteen-year-old sweetie. Uh-uh, not you, buddy. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, what were we talking Maybe about? Oligarchy. Children who think that you're clever. <laughs> yeah, you can get their attention. Well, I, but like, uh, woman, the girls, no, I'm cringing. What is the what laugh. is the current conversation topic? You were talking about oligarchies. Go for it. No, I said the neoliberal economic dogma, you know, instituted with uh, Greenspan starting in 64, that how monopolies are good so long as they inflate uh, <coughs> prices is a good thing for an economy. I think that that's the problem that we're having. Wait, what and does that have to do with supporting on... Bezos? What, what is the topic right now? Pardon? What, what exactly is the topic right now? Well, we're talking about Bezos, right? And you're looking at like the, the, the hair on the dog and I'm looking at the actual dog. See, that's the difference. Because who gives a shit how much money Bezos is paying his workers? That's not the point. The point is that Amazon is a monopoly. That's the problem. So what would you change? Do you think that companies like Amazon or- Break up monopolies, yeah. Okay, I think that's pretty reasonable. I don't disagree with that. Okay, so maybe let's get on to something that's a bit closer to people's hearts. How about abortion rights? No, it's boring because okay. he's going to try to fudge the issue of conception. And I'm going to say that conception is the point at where an individual uh, comes into existence. And he's going to deny it. That's going to be a waste of time. Move on to the next one. That's right. <laughs> I don't know. I think people would enjoy hearing you go against the man. You two again. Nah, whatever. Uh, what else we got? Frankly, uh, today, I'm much more interested in what's going to happen with uh, coronavirus. That's much more interesting to me. Yeah, I saw you tweeting earlier today that you are against Trump giving like one to two K uh, to people to get through the crisis. Right? 
Yeah, that's a, it's going to be a disaster because he's basically trying to, and, and the Senate too, they're trying to shore up the corporate bond market. And it's understandable why they're trying to shore it up uh, because that debt is unsustainable and it's unpayable. But if they, uh, you know, try to open up the money spigot to shore up the corporate bond market, it's going to blow up in their faces. So I don't think the goal is to shore up the corporate bond market. I think the goal is to yes, provide is. people with money for the duration no, no, of period no, where they're not working. That's why we're no, no, giving money. Yeah, that's why we're giving cash money. injections like directly to people rather than just giving money to businesses is the idea. Okay. Look, do the math. Okay. Okay. There are 330 million people in the United States, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Uh, you give them, uh, you know, you discount roughly a third of that because they're uh, either uh, infants or they disqualify prisoners, whatever. So you have 220 million people, a okay. thousand bucks each. That's 220 billion dollars, right? Okay. And they're talking about uh, one and a half trillion. Okay. okay? The money that's going to be the direct payments to people, mm -hmm. that's chunk change. What's they're, what they're really aiming for is to shore up these corporations and give them lifelines. And they're arguing about whether they're giving basically free money or they're going to get warrants for the money that they're going to put out or they're going to shore up the bond market. And now that the Federal Reserve is shoring up the bond market with huge what, is, what, is, what, what is giving money to, to individuals so they can pay their bills have to do with shoring up the bond market? I think he's talking about the bill as a whole. Let's oh, okay. Accomplish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, you're a little the, slow, aren't you? I don't think you know much about finance, do you? Yeah, I bet you don't. So anyway, the problem we're going on right now is that... <laughs> this guy is so funny. Um, yeah, so wait, so I'm curious. Why do you think we can't pay? Why do you think we can't pay people a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars for a month or two while they are all in quarantine and aren't able to work? Well, because the quarantine is going to last a lot longer than sixty days. We don't know that yet. So let's talk about two months. Why can't we pay them so one to two thousand? Why can't we pay them one to two thousand dollars a piece for a month for two months while the quarantine is going on? Okay. If you pay that amount of money, you're going to inflate it with currency. That's Simple just not that. true. The the type that's of inflation true. that you're talking about hasn't happened. This is it's funny that you say you don't know anything about finance because this is one of the largest issues that economists are tackling with right now is the idea that mm -hmm. all of the inflation that everybody said we're supposed to have by things like quantitative easing or historic low interest rates just hasn't happened. This is one oh one. Anybody can look this up. It's a huge debate in economics right now. Like people don't understand why we haven't seen any of that inflation. So the idea okay. that inflation is magically gonna happen because we do a one uh -huh. or two time cash stimulus, even though similar ish things have been done under Bush. Just doesn't really hold mm -hmm. any water. So do you have a okay. better answer? So or? What, what's Jerome Powell? Who's Jerome Powell, by the way? I'm not sure. I don't know how that's relevant to anything I just yeah. said. Jerome Powell is the chairman of the Federal Reserve. You want to right now? Okay, know. sure. What about it? Okay. Uh, you know what? Did, what policy is he going to be implementing? Announce. What your mic cut out? What what? What policy did he announce over the weekend that he's going to be putting out? Um, I think they're doing more QE. I think is what they said. What is QE? It's quantitative easing. Mm -hmm. And what asset class are they going to be purchasing? I, I don't know. Treasury bonds or something? What? No, they're going to be purchasing corporate debt. Okay. okay. And they're probably going to go into the equity market, markets as well. They're going to be buying up to $125 billion a month. I mean, excuse me, a day. A day. Jesus fucking Christ. So anyway, what you're saying, okay, about uh, the direct payments, the direct payments, they are likely never Wait, going no, to Wait, no, 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 no. When you say corporate debt, Mm -hmm. It's you're, you're talking. Are you talking about the repo swap? The, the, those are they're trading out no, cash for repo, bonds. You, you don't know what the corporate debt is. <laughs> okay, corporate debt is also called corporate bonds. Okay. Okay, so you there were wrong on bonds, that. So c c go bonds, continue on with your explanation. Jesus, issues. you don't know what you're talking. You are talking about repos. <sighs> repos is a financial problem whereby banks collateralize overnight lending. It's a completely different problem. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about, do you? Jesus Christ, what a fucking ignorant asshole. You know, you act like you talk, you like you know what you're talking about. You're confusing. I think these are worse than my conversations with, with, with uh, the QE. bullshit patrol. Or not the uh, bullshit patrol, uh, uh, the uh, no bullshit. Holy debt. shit. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Okay, look, this is, let's move on to the next topic because this one, it's too boring for me to talk about with him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, okay. Do you, do you have any particular topics you have in mind? Uh, well, he's too scared to talk about abortion. He doesn't want to talk about stimulus. He, uh, like, I don't know. It you, seems like he just wants to obsess over me the entire about time. Economics. You have no fucking idea. You just confused the repo market with corporate debt. 
You, what the fuck? You mentioned $1.5 trillion, which is suspiciously the exact same amount of dollars that they talked about on the recent repo market transactions. I wasn't sure if you were mistakenly referring to that or not, which is why I asked you for clarification. Define the repo market transaction. I'm not going to sit here and define every single economic please, term or transaction for you. what the repo market is. If you can explain it, then, then it shows that you know what you're talking about. Please explain. Where it. the treasury trades out liquid cash for in, in exchange for bonds that corporations are holding you're so that they have more liquidity. I'm not reading anything. We've literally talked about this. Before. The past like two weeks. You're literally oh my reading. god! So when I give you yeah. the actual answer, now it's that Jesus I'm reading. <laughs> Jesus Christ! It's just like when we talked that time about inferences, and I oh mentioned abductive god. inference, and you looked it up and read the definition off of Wikipedia. Yeah, I Jesus. yes, I, but I'm not gonna say I didn't look that one up. Of course, I don't hear people talk about abductive reasoning much. I usually hear inductive and deductive. I hadn't heard abductive. In, in the context of a conversation before. Yeah, it's only like the one of the three principal ways of reasoning as the defined by C.S. Peirce. Do you know who C.S. Peirce is? I don't. Yeah, of course. And you talk about reason and logic. C.S. Peirce, for those of you who don't know, which is probably most people, he is the uh, he is an American philosopher. He was a pragmatist, and he is considered by most people to be the father of modern logic. And he defined three classes of inferences, inductive, deductive, and abductive. And our boy here, Stephen, is so fucking clever, and he was talking to me about logic, and he didn't know what the fuck abductive logic was. Why would abductive you need to? Was. Why would you need Jesus. to know? Why, to wait, why, I'm curious. Why would you need to know? From Wikipedia, as if he knew it. Why would you? Jesus. Why would you need? Pathetic. Why would you and need? You to, just why would you need to know what abductive logic is debt. in order to understand deductive so or inductive anything logic? Anything you have to say about wait, wait, can you can you tell me? Uh, can you tell markets? me why? Can you tell me why? Fuck you, off! Can you you tell don't know what you're talking about, little man. Let's slow down. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> fuck. This is all of our conversations. Just him screaming at me. <laughs> he's like yeah, so fucking insecure. It's insane. He Holy shit. Act as if he knows what he's talking about. Because you don't care about finding the truth. You don't care about learning. You don't care about listening to somebody else. You just care about winning. Winning an argument so that you can feel better about yourself. Because the only thing that gives you any kind of satisfaction is besting other people in an argument. That's you. That's how you work. It, it, it's transparent to anybody who watches you in any of your conversations, i.e. quote unquote debates. They're not even conversations. They're not debates. They're you just trying to win. That's all you care about. You don't care about learning. You don't care about showing stuff to people. No, nothing. You just want to prove how smart you are. And it's boring. And, and now, you know, like this conversation, I just wanted to get on here to show the people on your stream and the people listening here who you really are. You're not somebody admirable. You're not trying to contribute anything. You're Says the guy that posts on Reddit people. about how at 52 he only dates 18-year-olds. Okay, no, dude. I didn't post it on Reddit. <laughs> okay, I did a video about it. And I suggested why they... Are you not Please. Coach Red Pill on Reddit? As I wrote before, I only date women between the ages of 18 and 25. Never any woman older than 26. By Coach Dash Red Dash Pill. And how is this not your post? The problems that they're having now. Wait, is this not your post? I, I, Hello. I do not. It it, it is your post. So you did post on Reddit. Whatever. You just didn't think I saw it, but okay. Okay, fine. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'm done with with Stephen because he's boring to me. <laughs> Okay, how how about how about we move on to something else that maybe he's not, he's, I don't think he's ever gonna have like an actual conversation with me. This is like one of the most insecure people I've ever spoken to in my entire life. But I guess like most like okay. red pill or like if you alpha want male to people characterize are. Characterize me as that? Sure, go ahead. Okay, I, mean, I think people can come to their own conclusions. I guess. I think they will. Maybe transsexual rights is something you're interested in debating, Coach. They are people with mental infirmities. Period. Now we have something to go on. I think. Um, what part is the mental infirmity? Ah, uh, see? Retreat and pivot. I can't ask a clarifying question? <laughs> that That's the way you operate, man. It's boring. Move on. Okay. Well, hey, listen. <laughs> this has been fun, but this is honestly giving me brain rot. Um, I, we can't, we like, he's, you can't have a conversation with this guy. Like, he's actually, like, delusional. I don't know, um. Okay. I sure. don't know what to say. I don't know if you're on downers or if you're a little drunk or what. No, I'm perfectly fine. Oh, because you came in here already, you know, crying that you were sick and that you might be off your game. Because I am sick, but that's that's neither here nor okay. there. You got the corona? Have you been traveling a lot? 
Yeah, probably do actually. I'm sorry. But the, and the silence filled the filled the room. Yeah, I had yeah, nothing left to say. What else do you want me to say? Don't die, I guess. And the uh, and the no, Warsaw but, Airport and in the last you can, uh, few weeks. So yeah, probably. So big deal. But maybe you can like expound a little bit on what particularly the behavior you see in transsexuals that would be classified as a mental illness. They are unhappy with their own bodies and they decide to radically alter their bodies rather than reconcile themselves psychologically to the fact that they are born a man or born a woman. And a lot of other people uh, indulge their fantasy. And it's just, look, we're going to look back on this period and be horrified by some of the shit that went on, including the castration of small children and the, the amputation, the, the uh, double mastectomies of so many young women. And the fact that all so this doesn't happen to young children, turned, right? Will be turned so sterile. This doesn't happen to young children and young children aren't turned sterile. This isn't reflective of where the science is at right is, now in any of us. They are they're turned not, sterile they're with, not, with hormone, no, with uh, puberty blockers. Puberty blockers, they blockers they do not make you sterile. As soon as you go okay, off puberty fine. blockers, that's, that's just how the science works. Sorry, that makes you upset. Um, no, if that, it's easier for true. you to transition, it, it, is, it, it is true. Okay, it is whatever. True. Puberty blockers okay. do. What do you think fine, puberty blockers fine. do? What do puberty blockers do? Okay, it's in the it's in the term, and this is boring. Sure. No, no, I'm curious. You wanted to play 20 questions with me earlier. Why don't you tell me? What do puberty blockers do? You're a sick fuck. Wait, why can't you tell me what puberty blockers do? It's not. It's obviously not a good thing. Jesus. Why can't you tell me what puberty blockers do? It's in the fucking name. What do they do? Okay, we're done. He won't answer the question. He, This guy fucking gives me 20 questions earlier, and he won't fucking answer. He won't answer any question I ask. It's so cringe. Yeah, okay. it, it, that's, that's not cringe, okay? It that's, is cringe, bro. Bro, you're posting cringe. Going. Watch out, you're gonna lose subscribers. And that's I'm not gonna lose subscribers, okay? Bro, you're posting cringe right now. Mm. Alright, Destiny, one second. What's up? Um, isn't one of the issues with puberty blockers is that they actually cause the penis to not fully develop so that um, when transgender people go for the surgery later on, there's not actually enough um, penile mass. Um, to cause, uh, to create a pseudo vagina? Nope. Um, one of the worries, the only two worries I've ever heard is. related to puberty so blockers I'm is that they might quit. have it. Okay, okay. okay. It's me rage quitting, that's fine. No, but look, I'm Coach, bored. there's a couple I'm other topics we can go through. I've given you yeah, 40 fine, minutes. Coach. Because, <laughs> like, you asked me, and I'm Wait, fine. Coach, 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 I've got you... another topic that I thought... Uh, don't, don't cuck through. out to him. If he wants to leave, then we, we can chat for 20 minutes if you want. I'll stay here. Okay, go ahead. What is the question? What is the topic? Um, well, because there's a, you posted about a week ago, um, a video about simps. Yeah. And recently there was like a, um, I think a TikTok woman for Bernie. And she did like a big viral video and it turns out that she's got a boyfriend. Um, so do you think that like these TikTok and Twitch women, like, are they I totally dropped on... out? Hello? Do you guys hear me? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay. sorry. I, I lost the last. I'm so sorry. I lost the, the entire question. Would you mind I'll repeating be quick. it? I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'll be quick then. Um, do you think Twitch and TikTok um, women are preying on lonely and vulnerable men? Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they are. And, uh, you know, if, uh, if it works for them, you know, good on them. I don't have a problem with the women doing it, you know. I mean, you know, I, I have a problem with the guys doing it. You know, I think that that's pathetic. And I've said so. If the woman, you know, wants to, like, you know, flash her cleavage, just her cleavage, not even her tits, flash her cleavage and get people to throw money at her, you know, I mean, shit, you know, sign me up for breast implants. I'll do it next week. You know what I'm saying? Sure. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I don't have a problem with, the, with women doing it. Do I respect them? No. Am I going to take them seriously? No. Uh, but if they're doing it, that's nah, fine. You know, I mean... I think it's pathetic, but, you know, I mean, pathetic, but, like, let me rephrase. It's not the women doing it that I object to. They're just taking advantage of the market situation. <laughs> the simps who throw money back. Yeah, them. No, I, I don't respect them at all. So you pay money you to girls to go like here, that, uh, Stephen? Who, me? No. Mm, you sure about that? I, you you literally have no idea who I am. It's like really cringe. You're making a you're taking a whole bunch of shots in the dark that are so off. You have no idea. Would you do it if the girl was eighteen? 
I'm asking you, you know, I'm just asking questions. Just Why are you asking? afraid to answer the oh, questions? Okay. I'm not afraid to answer are, the question. You, yeah, I answer the question very honest, clearly. And then you tried to ask me again it. to see if I would give no, you, you a didn't. different answer. Are you paying money? So if you, you didn't, if you didn't, if you didn't hear, I literally said verbatim, no, I answered it directly as directly as a human possibly could. Wait, and then wait, you asked you again, no. you know what, wait, actually, wait, it's funny. Wait, this is actually no, a debate you... tactic that you do. You ask the same question <laughs> over and over again, thinking that you're making some strong rhetorical point when it's pretty clear you have no idea who the fuck uh, you're talking you. to. <laughs> and then you yeah, think you're like I'm making like points with the audience you. or whatever. You do that all the time. You yeah. do that all the time. Do you know the definition of parody, Stephen? Um, why, why don't you go ahead and define it for us? No, no, no. I asked you. Please define it. You're smart. You man. literally or, or wouldn't tell me what a puberty fast. blocker was earlier. I'm not going to play the definition game. For you. So, <laughs> what is parody? What is what are puberty blockers? What is parody? <laughs> parody? It's in the name, bro. It's in the name, bro. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, where were we at now? Well, parody. It's in the name, bro. I lost track of the con. No, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to one of the moderators. Oh. Oh yeah, you're talking about Sims. <laughs> Um, Sims. And women and, oh, you and were going to define parody for us too, weren't you? Yeah, but look, the simp question is not really... Well, like, wait, but I'm actually so curious. I want to know what he thinks parody is. But... What, what does parody mean? I don't know. English knows me idioma. Can you, you why can't you tell us what parody means? <laughs> <laughs> what, Steven? Wait, can you tell us what parody how means? How much money do you make? I'm kind of curious now. Bro, can you tell me how much... Well, no, I'm, I asked you, though, at the beginning of this conversation, mm -hmm. how much money are you making? You never asked me that at the beginning of this conversation. But can you yes, tell me about No, you okay, didn't. Okay, you said, okay, that, I, you okay, said well, that I hide my wealth. I didn't ask it explicitly. I did it, I did it tacitly, and now I'm asking it explicitly. I don't. I, why what, would I tell you? If you want to know, you can go through my videos. I've been public about money? it in the past. <laughs> how, 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 much much how much money do you make? Uh, it depends. Wow, me too. It depends. Yeah, so, how nice. much money do you make on Twitch? Well, it depends. I can look it up, I guess, right? On Twitch, it's, it's going to be there? Yeah, it depends, though. Yeah, it depends on? I don't know. What does your money depend on? Uh, my uh, money, it depends on... Uh, well, it used to depend on the bond market, but not anymore. What does it depend I on now? Out last and so, I'm, I'm more than good now. I'm, yeah, I'm aces right now. Yeah. Yeah. There were signs. I saw signs. Yes, I did. Yeah, so um, what does your money depend on now? Now, it doesn't depend much on anything, to tell you the truth. Oh, uh, okay. I'm doing this uh, YouTube thing. It's a nice hobby, but uh -huh. I'm probably going to be winding it down pretty soon. Oh, well, that's um, good. Make the world a better place. The... <laughs> it's the best thing you could do for everybody. No, 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 no. no. I, I have a dedicated following there. I'm sure you do. A lot of strange people on the internet these days have dedicated following. Well, and you have a lot of children who follow you, so... No, I posted my stats in the channel right below yours earlier. Uh, according to YouTube, if we're going by those stats, my 13 to 17 year old viewer age is 1.2%. So, mm -hmm. seems like I don't have that yeah, many children. Okay. You know, that's a pretty audience. That's fine. That's respectable. You know? You know? Just, just don't grab them, Steve. Just don't grab them, little Stevie. All I right. think that would well, be wrong. Good luck, uh... <laughs> Fucking teenagers as a 52-year-old, I guess. Okay. Yeah, but you can't. I can. Isn't that kind of weird? I'm 20 years older than you, and I get better pussy than you. And I'm balding. <laughs> You're like the archetypical, like, wannabe alpha male. Like, you are so... You have any idea how insecure... So you brought up in this conversation how much money you make and how many girls no, you I fuck. Didn't. Because those are the ways that you define yourself. You understand no, that, that you, you, you understand. No, 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 no. No, so everyone in the audience has heard you that you have brought up, you have brought up how good it is that you're able to fuck young women you and that you make a lot of money. This is a very stereotypical thing that people do now you're when they have saying that I very brought it low up. confidence. It means that you it don't have a good you image did. of yourself, but it means that you <laughs> define yourself based on what society tells you makes you a worthwhile person. And to you, you think those things are fucking little girls and making a lot of money. Those are the two things that are really important to you. Okay, I, that's fine, interesting to fine. me. If you, if you think so, what am I? Who am I to argue? You're big, big brain. You know everything. Okay. Please define the repo market, big brain. Yeah, right after you I'm tell me what puberty blockers are, okay? About the repo market. Right after you tell me what puberty <laughs> blockers are, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the repo market. Yeah. Right after and you tell me what puberty blockers are. And the corporate debt market are the same thing. I yeah. want to know. Go ahead and that. tell me what uh, puberty blockers are. 
Oh, Go ahead and tell goodness. me what parody is. Is this, is this what you do? Do you do this with everybody you debate, or is it just me because I'm like a thorn in your side or something? Are you genuinely I'm intimidated not a, you're by not me? You're a thorn in my side. I don't think about you. I, I, well, I think actually, that no, I wonder that, if I'm one of the few people that, that genuinely intimidates you. That's what it I, seems like. Because every time on, we talk, you it, lose your fucking mind. Dude, I wonder if you, you get more bald talking? after our conversations. Will you stop talking for a minute so I can just make a fucking point? You've literally been talking for 80% of this conversation. We can tally up the time, and you have been Rambling and rambling and rambling while avoiding almost every single question I've asked you. You haven't been able to engage That's intellectually you. with That's a single you. point that I brought up. Everything. I have engaged. <laughs> anybody can go back and watch the clips. Dog, this isn't a good look for you. You don't. You're not coming off strong here. I don't know if you're used to being on podcasts where there's six other people screaming at me. So you think that you have like some rhetorical I or factual advantage, but you, you don't. I know it. You're a 53 okay. year old guy and on here do, screaming at me about how you make a lot of money off of bonds and fuck 18 year olds. I, you are okay. literally the stereotypical dude, version of dude, an alpha male that has zero confidence, zero self esteem, and goes can online I to please, flaunt things that they probably don't have in order to feel better about themselves because. They have zero yourself. fucking respect yeah. for themselves. Can I make a point? Can I make a point? Yes. Sorry, yeah. I, I, I'm not here for you to make oh, points. God, I just wanted damn. to analyze Shut Coach Red Pill. The only reason I came here today was because I wanted to see what makes you tick. And now I see what it is. It's pretending to have a lot of money, pretending to fuck 18-year-olds. That's okay, all that you get off I, on on the end of the day. It's really interesting. It's kind of sad, but it's interesting, okay, too. So wait, now I can see where your projections come from. When you tell okay. me that, oh, you must have been okay. bullied as a kid or whatever, was that you? Were you fat no. and bald in high school, and that's why you accuse me of being bullied? Because you no, think if it happened to you, it must be a ubiquitous experience among school. teenagers that do YouTube now or something? Or <laughs> okay. Is can that I, why you I, fuck 18-year-old girls, or try to I at talk? least? I, I'm, I I'm suspect of even that can claim. Are you trying to can get I, back at all I the girls that bully you through that. high school, and you can get back okay. at them now by fucking high this school girls? This is just boring. See? You just talking and talking and talking. Okay, I agree. It is boring. Can you tell me what puberty blockers or parody is? Okay, you're freaking the fuck out. Steven. I'm not freaking out at all right now. I'm just asking some simple yeah, questions. Are. What are puberty blockers? For, you were the you know, one like, screaming about oh. fucking 18 year olds and, and making a lot no, of money. You brought that up. You brought that up. You brought up, you asked me about how I make my You brought up the fact of who I date. You I asked you up. how you make money because you asked you me first how much money I make on Twitch. Now, remember that? Now, remember how you, you brought that? that remember the very beginning of this conversation? You, you open <laughs> by saying, well, if you make a lot of money as a leftist, aren't you a hypocrite? I never brought up money first, dude. It's always been you. It's always okay. been you. I don't know then, if you're actually aware of this. How come you're a hypocrite who doesn't donate? I already explained all, all of this. I do donate, firstly. And secondly, you don't donate and se to causes. I do, you I do so. donate you to causes. Why should you I do donate to causes. For, for your, for what you I do in. donate to causes. You, you don't know that. You're making you bad assumptions. You're making bad assumptions. You're making bad assumptions. That's what you said. I didn't say that. What I said was we talked about tax burden. Do you? What's the difference between taxes and donating to charity? Okay, this is funny. Guys, it's been a blast, but okay. I'm losing my voice. So, uh, yeah, Steven, yeah, good luck. Good luck, little man. You're yep. going to need I it. Hope you, uh, save, I'm, <laughs> I hope you save this VOD and show it to all the high school girls you try to pick up, my dude. Good luck. Well, I don't have to pick up a high school girl because I got a woman now. So, you know, mm -hmm. that's that's my life. Oh, but oh anyway, wait, is she 18? Take it easy. Uh, guys, uh, well, I didn't talk to you guys at all. I'm sorry. This is, well, this is the debate between Steve and you two. Steve was steamrolling me, but great chatting with I you was, all. I was trying to find a picture of a, two steamrollers car crashing into each other, but I couldn't find one. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. Um, wait, what do you, you do when the woman you're anyway. dating... Wait, wait, I'm curious. When the woman you're dating turns 26, do you dump her? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's our, that's our resident red guys. pill right there. All right, later, man. Oh, there he goes. Okay. <sighs> This is this uh, is basically how I, pill today. <laughs> every single conversation I've had with this guy basically goes this way. I Jesus Christ. Uh, Destiny, well, would you be fine with Coles? Um, yeah, go for it. Oh yeah, oh, we, we got Catboy be... Cammy who wants to come in. Also, possibly, oh, yeah, I don't know if you know who Catboy Cammy is, or. I like how that was the only question he was able to answer to. Oh yeah, no, I don't know anybody. Sorry, Wait, who is it? Go for it. Okay, he's um he's the guy that Nick Flint has gotten hot water with because he was streaming with him, and he is a oh the Neko cat who dresses guy or up as a cat. Yeah. Exactly. 
You, I you can't. Want, you um, want to have a talk with him? Yeah, well, sure. Listen, okay. I, I, I'm not saying this to be disrespectful or anything. If somebody starts like dropping yeah. n bombs or like racial slurs, I have to leave. I can't. So if he comes on, I, and he starts I, I, al- I already told him to keep his okay, uh, gotcha. to keep his uh, right. material. Okay. If, if it happens, really if it happens, and again, no disrespect to you guys, but I just have to leave. I can't like risk that. Okay, just let so you know. All right. I absolutely understand. No. Okay, worries. got you. Cool. All right. Uh, I'm gonna try to add him in. We'll see. It might take him a couple moments to add uh, to join in. But as far as the conversation with coach has been, it's been very entertaining. I know that not getting any answers to the questions you want answered is is a little little frustrating, probably. But no, the audience. Whatever. This is basically so every fucking conversation. <laughs> that I've yeah, this I, game. I'm not sure 100 percent why he. I don't know. I was kind <laughs> that of was hoping really that a couple of these political topics were going to get covered, like a transsexual rights or such. But... Now, once he started going into the whole analyzing stuff, it was like, I mean, you could have gone to political stuff, but it, it wouldn't have been as good. So, who cares? I see. Um, well, okay. Looks like Catboy Cami is still stiff up or something. We got another one. He is a hardcore seven-day Adventist. I don't know how much you enjoy talking to religious people, but boy, is this guy religious. Oh, well, is it Leo? Oh, oh yeah, of it. course. It's Leo. <laughs> he, was, uh, <laughs> he was somewhat of a celebrity back in the Gamergate days, where, where all the drama stems from. Official leader of Gamergate, yeah. He made a video about Sarah Nyberg in the time. A large expose about the, the, the chat logs where uh, she talks about being, uh, what was it? Something about molesting her nephew or something, and fucking dogs, something like that. I don't know if this means anything to you. The gamer gate is nope, a for it, him, yeah. whole IBS. Okay. okay. <laughs> and he also did not pick up. <laughs> okay. No, look, they probably they probably just need a moment to get their shit set up. I mean, I didn't know, like, I, I told him beforehand that the conversation with Coach might be cut short a little bit. But I did not, I couldn't give them any time when exactly that would be, because he's a little unpredictable like that. But, uh, yeah, I know. The, like, the, the whole yes, community sort of star, started around all these ex-Gamergate figures, your Sargon of Akkad, the, the, the Andy Worskis, the Ethan Ralphs, people that started there and sort of made a living based on that. Mm-hmm. And, well, Leah was one of the people that, that at least sort of entered into it, but never really tried to make it a career. So he just did the occasional video where he tries to, you know, dissect a particular topic like Sarah Nyberg, who I believe was a video game dev, or what was it? Just the. Uh, it doesn't really matter, frankly. It was so long ago, and it was. Not I really. He's, no. That's not really what he's about now. He's pretty much moved on exclusively to making Christian content. So that's oh, yeah, basically definitely. what he gets. Okay. If he comes in, I'm not sure if he's going to. We'll we'll wait around for a couple more minutes. If no one comes in, that's that. Um, we don't want to keep you waiting for nobody. Sure, I understand. But yeah, look, both of them said they'd be interested in it, so I'm pretty sure they'll uh, they'll get in here soon. But you know, you never know this shit. But either way, to sort of wrap up the whole coach thing, like, um... how do you think that went? Did you enjoy that? Was that good? <laughs> Are you not asking me? Yeah, no, I, I hate that? talking to this guy. It's so fucking annoying. There's like three or four different people that I talk to who I, who like are super fucking intimidated by me. And all they do when I get into a conversation with them is they like they try to like bounce around on certain topics to ask a get your question. Like, do you know like who is the chair of the Federal Reserve? Like, I don't fucking know his fucking name. And then like after they feel like they've gotten like one or two gotchas, they'll just keep dancing around topics, accuse me of acting in bad faith, never answer or respond to any of my questions because they have like very carefully prepared dialogue, and then usually make some vague personal insults, and then they'll moonwalk the fuck. Out is every conversation I've ever had with Coach Red Bull. Okay. Leo is grabbing his microphone, so he should be joining in any moment now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, I suppose, this is all, you already knew what was going to happen based on your previous conversations. I thought there was only one, but I guess you had ones before that maybe are not on your YouTube. Or... No, we've had a few before, yeah. I see, I see. Are they on there too, or uh, did I just miss them or what? I don't even know if I went channel or not. These are, I've been through the years. Yeah, fair enough. You've you've been banned from several platforms already, so it uh, it gets a little hard to keep track of everything. <laughs> only banned from Twitter. Okay, calm down. <laughs> only from Twitter. I, I I don't know. I don't know. I mean, everyone gets banned from Twitter at least once. That's that's not okay. that's not that hard to do. Well, I haven't, but then I don't really use the Twitter for much anyway. But yeah, yeah. it's just gonna send me. Happens don't get banned from Twitter. Nice. <laughs> We're <true>. safe. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, but I don't know, Destiny. Are there any any other particular right wing figures you'd really interested in in debating? Or I really my dream. Well, the dream dream. Well, it was Jordan Peterson. I don't even know if that guy's brain is still working. Um, Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro are like the ultimate dream. Um, my kind of dream for people that I want to but that always duck out are um, Stefan Molyneux and Stephen Crowder. But I don't think either of those guys will ever talk to me. Um, unless given a well, reason to something. Molyneux actually went in and, uh, <laughs> and debated against JF recently. So who knows? Maybe yeah, there's an Vosh, opening but there somewhere. He specifically dodged me multiple times. Like we almost had something set up via Ralph. And then I think he remembered it was me or found out it was me. Like he had me blocked on Twitter before. He always finds excuses or reasons not to have a conversation with me. Yeah. Ah, shit. Well, if I run into any other, any other right-wingers that seem somewhat intellectually interesting, I'll definitely see if I can get something going there. But, uh, uh -huh. you know. Oh, Jesus, Leo, are you still done if your mic ready? Christ. Okay, there's a couple questions from chat. Well, the first one is, of course, <laughs> if you know what this is, otherwise we won't get into too much detail. What is your favorite toe hole? <laughs> My favorite toe hole? Toe hole. <laughs> T-O-U-H-O-U. <laughs> I have no, I don't think... no idea, sorry. No. Is this an Australian thing or some shit, or what? It's it's an anime no. video game. Uh, it's a bunch of anime girls, and we were wondering what your favorite yeah, one of them is. There, there's no point in getting into it if yeah, he doesn't no, know. No, no, <laughs> so, we'll definitely explain list. why why CRP about the $2,000 bill being catastrophic. Wait, hold on. Fuck, you might cut out a little bit. What do you say? Could you repeat that? Oh. Will Destiny explain why CRP is wrong about Trump's two thousand dollar bill being catastrophic? Um, yeah. So, like right now, one of the big worries that we have in the economy is that if everybody's out of work for two months, a whole bunch of shit is about to start lapsing. Um, people are gonna fall behind on their mortgages. People are gonna fall behind on their bills, and arguably more importantly, to the economy, people aren't gonna be spending anything. People aren't gonna be buying goods or services, and everything is gonna grind to a halt. Um, you run into these bad spirals where if people stop buying things, companies have to lay off workers, and then when those workers are laid off, they can't buy anything, and then it like def like spirals out of control in a really negative way. So the goal in providing some stimulus is to try to keep the economy afloat, like through like a pandemic crisis. Um, the idea that like if we just start handing out hundreds of billions of dollars, we're gonna have runaway inflation is probably not true. I'm sure that there's some limit to how much money we can give out, but we've already spent so much and injected so much and had interest rates so low that it doesn't seem like inflation is as big a problem as we used to think it was. So it's like a, a big thing that economists are talking about right now. Yeah. So I, I was kind of disappointed that he left before explaining this. Was that he, it sounded like he was saying there's more to the bill they're trying to pass than just the stimulus. Because I don't think it's, it's going to be hard to argue against. Well, yeah, there's a, well, there's off. different bills that are um, being presented in Congress. I think the one that recently the Democrats weren't happy with is I don't think there was enough provided to consumers. And there was a lot of money and stimulus provided to corporations, which seemed like dumb because there's no guarantee that corporations are going to use that money in ways that help the average U.S. citizen or even the greater U.S. economy. I think it was the Democratic criticism of the recent bill. I don't know every single provision in the bill. I don't know if there was something in yeah, there I mean, to sure. show up bond markets. I don't, I don't know about that. I haven't read about those parts, but that's what I'm familiar with right now. No, I think I think what he was trying to say, I think what he was trying to argue, like he said that, like you know, the the money for the people, like the two thousand dollar checks for individuals, was like chump change compared to what was actually in the bill and what they actually the bill was trying to fund specifically. So maybe it was something with the bond markets. Mm -hmm. I was actually interested in what that was going to be, but he uh, stopped talking about it before he got into it. Well, I think the problem is that like I don't think he has a good understanding of any of these things. He usually picks up like headlines, or he'll pick up like a couple sentences he can say about it. But if you actually push him to like go in and like, well, what does this mean or what does that mean, he can't actually explain it. That's why he usually diverts to like jokes or questions or starts quizzing you and then he runs away from the yeah. topic yeah it's because he just I, I debate a lot of people that do that they just memorize like a twitter headline and then you try to ask them for clarification or anything they can't explain it and then you just run away from the topic yeah. uh, that's possible he was talking to us last night um a couple nights ago about the market yeah. he was doing some also, stuff so i was possibly he knows a little bit but i, I didn't is. get into it so i'm kind of sad about that sure i um i was being a little disingenuous earlier as well there are pictures of me out there um this picture is not photoshopped it's probably one of the reasons why coach red pill doesn't like me so much <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. Leo, you're here, buddy. He's mic's muted. Though. He's probably gonna give him a few seconds. He, he always is on push to talk, so he's normally always muted. And then you know, uh, you'll, yeah, you'll what's up? Switch over. We got this. Yeah, no, we're good, yeah. man. But, uh, the debate with Coach went uh, more or less as expected. He he held on for about an hour though, so that was uh, oh, I missed it. Zone, but uh, don't worry, there's there's more than enough places that have recordings. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Now I'll definitely check it out. Are we live on Destiny's channel right now? Yeah, we yeah, sure are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll I'll hold back on all right certain things. Thanks. Yeah, watch your language. <laughs> I already fucked up. <clears throat> certain topics, like certain certain tribes, we won't talk about. Got it? Okay. Yeah. 
but yeah, what's right. what's going you, on? You want you want a debate topic for me from me, or do you have something to go on, or uh, what? <laughs> I mean, I don't really know. I just th knew that we had to fill the time. I did want to ask you, uh, Mister Destiny, uh, what is your religious upbringing, uh, upbringing, and are you religious at all? Um, I was brought up Catholic. Uh, I went to a Catholic institution for like I went to Catholic grade school. I went to Jesuit high school. Um, but I would consider myself to be atheist or religious now. <laughs> Wow, that's uh, I actually have a very similar upbringing. Similarly, also was raised Catholic, went to Sunday school, went to Catholic school, all that stuff. Didn't go to a Jesuit school though. That's I didn't know that about you. That's because those are really prestigious institutions, you know. Yeah, it was that's private. Like, yeah, the private schools and yeah. stuff and everything. It's, really good school. I really liked it. I didn't like my grade school education as much. The religion there was really weird, but I thought in high school they did a way better job with it. And so, what was it that really led you to this sort of atheist standpoint you have now? Did you just was there anything um, in particular? It feels like if you start asking enough questions or you do like enough thinking about it, it seems like most religion doesn't stand up to a lot of scrutiny, um, whether it's empirical or philosophical. Uh, so I don't know. I just kind of drifted away from it over time. That is how I felt. And I think it's really easy to do that, particularly with a Catholic upbringing, because I remember going to church, seeing the you know illustrious, beautiful statues, illustrations, and just the amazing, ornate ceremonies that they have. But then you do research, like you said, into... The, the Catholic institution into the corruption, the the widespread scandals that have really not just happened recently, but throughout the entire church's history. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to think, yeah, this is just a giant scam to control the masses. And then when you think of the character of Christ, just how perfect he is, like on the cross saying, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. It's like, okay, this is clearly a fairy tale to make everyone feel guilty because no one can possibly be as perfect as Christ so you need an institution that brings people to try and obey it to make up for the fact they will never be like Christ. And I had a very similar, uh, I'd say, path as, as you. You know, as I grew up, like went through college and stuff, I was like, yeah, there's really nothing to this. It's just, just like any other religion. It's man-made, made to control the masses. Uh, but the difference is I realized that Catholicism is not Christianity. Uh, you ever notice that? There's a big difference between the two. Catholics always are adamant to say, oh, you know, I'm not Christian, I'm Catholic. Well, of course, because first. you have Catholics and you have, um, it's Protestants. Protestants. Yeah, all yeah. All, so all, arguably all of the other denominations are a rejection of Catholicism because of all the corruption and shit in the Middle Ages or whatever, right? Like, So, I mean, I can understand why Catholics feel a little bit irritated at the people that left the church, basically, is how they would view it, or that, that would be the argument they would give, right? Yeah, it's just interesting, though, when you ask Protestants or any of these cereal flavor of christianity because there's so many denominations right mm -hmm. they'll say they're christian you know they won't immediately say like well i'm protestant so they just identify themselves as a follower of christ but catholics are a very special brand because they are the, the one true church that goes back to apostolic succession and the greek word for the word catholic actually means universal sure. like the whole world like a world empire and you know catholic right uh the catholic empire they controlled europe for more than a thousand years yeah, of course and they've got the original pope he, i think peter was the first pope whatever right and then through him like all popes get their yes. power from the succession and that's all that shit. yeah yeah so that's Catholics, the catholic like, tradition yeah they have their own fucking city and country and and church and their <laughs> own empire and everything so yeah so it was quite a shock to me when i was studying the bible to find out that the the union of religion and state is actually uh something god completely detests it's actually an abomination unto God, the idea that religion and a government could be combined. Uh, and this is all throughout the Old and the New Testament. Uh, Christ himself, when he was sort of challenged by the Pharisees, they asked him a trick question. You know, they wanted to catch Jesus in a trap, and they said, should we pay tithes to the yeah, temple? They render uh, unto Caesar alter? what is Caesar's or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Keep them separate. Christ is saying, like, I do think... not make them united. I think, well, oh God, fuck, my religious history is so, it's so long ago. My understanding of that passage was more so that that didn't necessarily speak to the separation of church and state, but that more just said that, like, you, you weren't able to use your religion as an excuse to, like, betray, like, the, the desires of a state. That what the Pharisees were trying to do was see if they could trick Jesus into foolishly saying, well, you ought to break the law because that's what God commands. But Jesus wisely responds, well, of course you should pay your taxes. Like, render unto Caesar what is his. Um, and then, so with know, the, yeah. Right, so with the way, uh, you look at the passage is a trick question because the Pharisees, whatever answer Jesus said, they would have reported him. If he sure. said you should pay taxes to the to the Romans, then they would report him to the Pharisees saying he's breaking the religious law, withholding tithes from the temple. If he said you should pay your tithes to, you know, uh, the temple, then they would report him to the Roman government sure. and say he's now violent. So his answer 
was they are two separate things. Mm -hmm. Like, don't even try and say it's one or the other. They are completely separate. Do not make them united in any way. And that's just one example, right? There's there's so many that really it t teaches to the fact that uh, the union of church and state is what kills God. Because if you think about it, the Pharisees, that was the religious power of the day, and the Roman government was the political power of the day. Both of them united to kill Christ. The Pharisees delivered Christ to the Roman, uh, what is it, soldiers and governor, and crucifixion is a Roman execution. But if you ask the Jews today, they'll say, oh, the Romans killed Jesus. If you ask Catholics, they say, oh, it was the Jews who killed Jesus. It's like, you know, why not both? It was literally the union of religion and state killed the son of God. That's that's really, so you, you study that and you're like, wow, you know, like this Catholic institution, that's kind of like not something that's found throughout the Old or the New Testament, advocated rather. Uh, and if you do more study Destiny, you might even find the Catholic Church is talked quite a bit about in the Bible, uh, but in a negative way. <laughs> there are so many prophecies that identify specifically the Roman Catholic Church that it's like not even possible to expound upon all this in the short time we have together. Sure. Okay, so wait, what exactly, what is the point that we're getting at? Are you going to tell me that my well, Catholic I was going to say, how much scripture? How much scripture have you read, really, is what I want to get at. Um, I know that we went over like selected passages in the Old Testament. We obviously studied the four Gospels. Um, they were between Matthew, Mark, and Luke versus John. Um, and then we mm -hmm. did a little bit of other New Testament study, but the, the it, chiefly it was over the um, the four Gospels for sure. Um, and then parts of the Old Testament. I don't remember specifically. It's been a long time. Well, yeah, same with me. That's mm -hmm. Sunday school. You study the parables of Jesus. You study the Gospels. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. Uh, but that's Gospels, right? That's four books yeah. out of 66 books that make up the at least canon that came out of uh the the king james translation though there's the apocrypha and there's more other books right but at least within the 66 books that's so little and within the gospels they constantly refer back to isaiah to genesis to psalms so many references throughout uh and i would say for you at least if you're ever interested in at least not necessarily becoming religious, but at least wanting to make fun of Christianity better, I'd recommend studying the Bible because that's what I, that's how my journey went. I was like, you know, if I'm going to make fun of Christians and say it's like just a giant uh, hoax made by man and stuff, let me at least like learn the scriptures that that uh, that they make, you know, they constantly reference and study. And I found out that like, oh, no, one, no one does. Not even Christians. No one studies. Yeah, of the Bible. course. No one yeah. really reads it. <laughs> and uh, it's it's by design. You know that for more than a, like more than a thousand years, mankind didn't have access to the scriptures. Sure, that was why the oral tradition of the Bible was so important, right? That most of these books, I believe, were spoken about first, and then eventually it was recorded later on, yeah? Well, yeah, the Old Testament, for sure. But the mm -hmm. New Testament, they were they were written, and then they were withheld within the Roman Catholic Church and translated to Latin. So there was the Latin Vulgate, and not many people, well, very few people were literate, but even fewer people <laughs> knew Latin. So it just became a way for them to be the only authority to tell people what is really in the scriptures, what really happened. And you look at um, Jesuit theater in the past and stuff, they would basically reenact the passion in these plays and in these in these massive uh, ornate displays. And that's the only way people even knew anything about Christ. Hey, they didn't know Leo, the thing. Hmm? Sure. Um, hot question. Do you think um, too much has been lost in translation with the Bible for it to be effective? Well, I think, you know, the original transcripts, right, in Greek and Hebrew, obviously, the best, but you you find the story of the Pharisees. That isn't necessarily true. Okay, you can Leo, know the original I, I really language. want to remind you we're trying to hold a debate. Sorry. Here. So yeah, please, sorry, if we can find something you guys disagree on, what do we disagree on? rights or abortion, I really oh, tried to cover right. those, but coach, okay. coach really did not come into that. Let's, so, okay, let's stop please. talking about the Bible then, because uh, let's talk about the fruits of it and its impact on politics, because obviously, you know, I'm, I'm against... Uh, transsexuality abounds against gay marriage and stuff. You support gay marriage and, and uh, trans rights? Yeah. Is there a flag? Des trans rights with destiny, your face that plastered over it? Um, I, I mean, I don't know if there's a flag, but yeah, I definitely support the rights of LGBT people. You're <clears throat> so, bisexual yourself, or did I, was I mistaken there? Yeah, I think so. Okay. From a secular perspective, like, what, why do you believe it would be beneficial to society to have these things? <clears throat> Um, I generally think that people should be allowed to pursue things that make them the most happy, as long as it doesn't come to the detriment of society. I generally don't want to be fucked with, societally speaking, if I'm trying to pursue something that makes me happy. So insofar as we can protect the rights of other people to practice things, um, we should do so. It would be my general. Okay, idea. so we said to the detriment of society. Mm -hmm. uh, do you believe that there's absolutely no detriment to society in terms of gay marriage or, uh, what is it, child 
gay pride parades or any of these. There's no detriment to society. Um, nothing that can't be mitigated with a bit of cultural change. No. Can't be mitigated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I believe yeah, it could be mitigated by you know basically making gay marriage not a a, a tax benefit issue. Like if people want to do what they want, the the state shouldn't be involved when it involves something that doesn't produce children. Well, are you, you in favor that? of removing the tax benefits from marriage then? Well, not from marriage because it has a societal impact. Like, well, but uh, why not just reason... why not just have tax credits for having children then? We don't have to have any kind of tax advantage for being married. Well, we because marriage it. because statistically, it's been shown the benefits to a uh, what is it a male and a female influence on a child manifests in crime rates in a variety of uh, I'd say causal, not Oops. just correlational. Uh, statistics to show that most likely children co that come from a, a household of a mother and a father generally produce better for society like there's a secular benefit for it now from so, the bible well there's, there's th there, so there's there's this is kind of a mean statistic to play out but that's not true uh children produced from from gay households generally have way better outcomes than children produced from uh two straight parent households now the counter argument to that is technically because you're doing adoption these households are selected for so it's not like a good representative sample uh, but the idea that like gay households produce worse children that's just completely not true uh, like what, what statistics or like what are you referencing in particular that like uh, what is better and what is worse when I said better and worse I meant like crime statistics with grades in school like what do you mean by better um oh let me look it up and I'll throw you some links hold on um because what I find is the bible right it, you can't ta argue it from a secular perspective but what you find is the principles that are put forth in the bible manifest fruits in the secular world so it's like when, when uh, marriage is defined between a man and a woman in the Bible, you might just say, well, that's just all religion, you know, Middle Eastern religious fairy tales and stuff. Well, it actually has societal impact that we've seen be this, the, the foundation of uh, the civilization in the United States for the past two centuries. So here and is, only recently. So this is a link uh, to Cornell. Um <clears throat> where the guy is talking about, so we identify 79 scholarly studies that met our criteria for adding to the knowledge of the well-being of children with gay or lesbian parents. Um, and then the conclusion is this, taken together, this research forms an overwhelming scholarly consensus based on over three decades of peer-reviewed research that having a gay or lesbian parent does not harm children. So I'm pretty sure empirically speaking, and this is in a society that is still relatively um, stigmatizes gay people, not as much as it used to. But yeah, so I, I don't agree that like um, children produce- I'm sorry, it says yeah. fair, no worse. Below the 75 studies concluding that children, gay, lesbian parents fare no worse sure. than other children. But like, so the, is, maybe, they have 75 uh, studies linked to flow. They have all the, the studies. Yeah. I could read all of these. But I'm saying, like, what is that? I have to read the abstracts of all of these and find out, like, what is their criterion for for better or for worse? Like, sure. My, I'm going <laughs> to guess that they probably Goldberg, measure things. 2007. Some of these are good last names. You know, and you did say that they fared better originally. Yeah, I, I did. My understanding is that there are like socioeconomic outcomes and stuff, but that, that maybe that might not be true. I'd have to look it up. But I know that they don't fare worse, or I've never seen like any research that says they fare worse. And, and I can dig a little bit harder on this. I don't have these like offhand to produce, but like this is what I can Okay. Well, because yeah. it would. What I believe is I don't have I don't have these statistical studies. I haven't studied, you know, what Dr. Goldberg has to say. But what I will say Yeah, I don't know about is, the weird allusions to Jewishness. Like here's a WAPO article, children raised by same sex couples do better in school, new study. Oh no, there's there's so. Adams, there's I know there's other names. I'm just saying that particular say yeah, from two thousand seven. Focusing on one recent. study out of over what was it, seven? Okay, so what I was gonna say, Destiny, is because I'm gonna use history. Jewish? Okay. Right, I'm not going to use history, not not necessarily studies. You look at the French Revolution. Uh, they had actually did this uh, allowed gay marriage briefly before the reign of terror had come about. Like around once they had demolished the institution of marriage and said that any kind of religion, whether it be Catholic, Protestant, whatever, any form of religion, marriage, right, is the the vow of adultery. It's just simply there purely for the state. And once they did that, uh, pure anarchy broke out. And it, there really is no the conditions. Other I don't know if the conditions of that country at that time period match the conditions of the Western world today. No, no, obviously we're not quite there yet. I believe we're headed there and I believe we're going to, the whole world's going to basically mirror the, I mean, we've been hearing that the for the Revolution. past hundred years like, in terms of like, we're, we're nearing cultural degeneracy. Like they, they said it when women no, started that's not their ankles. No, no. Of course. They Frankly, said it... no, French Revolution didn't have cultural degeneracy. They were oppressed by the Catholics. And I believe that the whole world's going to basically overthrow uh, the, any influence of Catholicism and become a giant atheistic world empire. But until that point, we're still reaching the conditions 
of a French Revolution outbreak because people, we already passed gay marriage in the United States, and it happened several years after they had destroyed the institution of marriage before the reign of terror came The institution about. of marriage so, hasn't been destroyed at all. You're still fully able to get married in a Catholic or Christian church if you want. Like, it's just the same. No, it has before. been married by, you're right, and it didn't happen just with gay marriage. It happened with the no-fault clause, you know, way back when. The idea that marriage is, is just a, uh, a ritual for tax benefits, that in and of itself removes the influence of God in that union. Well, that's because, according to the federal government, it is. The federal government doesn't recognize the religious purpose of a marriage, but you're still free to do that on your own. The government doesn't need it's to. It's a civil institution. Sure, yeah, but civil I, I mean, as we said before, like, even biblically speaking, this should be okay. We don't want the government involved in something like marriage. Like, that should be left to the church itself, right? These are two separate so institutions. The right. I'm aware. The government enforces civil liberties, and uh, it's not in charge of morality, and religion is separate from the state. But what happens is the reason why people are getting into this civil union, if it's not inspired by God, the moral principles are not there. Because you look at the Ten Commandments, the Seventh Commandment, thou shall not commit adultery. Yeah, but the if you're not religious, is... then the commandments don't really carry much weight. That's not Exactly, argument, right? including that. Including that. Including like uh, being loyal to your husband or wife. You can be loyal so, to your husband or wife without having the commandments, though. You don't necessarily need yeah, to be loyal. Yeah, people... A lot of the commandments are like um, just like unmarked and um, naturalized in our society. So natural law is a parallel of what already existed. The Ten Commandments are non-temporal. They're from a power that existed before man and man and woman were ever came into existence, right? It's important to understand the Ten Commandments is the only part of the Bible God wrote with his finger. It's like it always has existed, and it's the in, it's an imprint of his character. So when you say natural law, things like, oh, not cheating on your wife, not stealing, not killing, well, these are things that mankind through secular knowledge have come to their own understanding. It has a utilitarian purpose to not kill or, or uh, rape people, right? Um, th those are a reflection of what was already a part of God's uh, original character. It's mirroring what was already there. Sure. Ass assuming you're already believing in God, sure, yeah. And uh, yeah, you're right. I have to keep this within secular bounds. I'm just trying to make the argument that what you what you say is just a bunch of Middle Eastern fairy tales. The benefits that come from it are demonstrable. They're quantifiable. They're measurable. You can. Well, yeah, of course, but we have to ask ourselves, why are those benefits there? Are the benefits existing there because it is? it speaks to some biological reality of humans that having a man and a woman is good? Or are the benefits just there because we might be uh, oppressive or institutionally uh, poised against certain groups of people? Because if it's and the, the right, latter, then we can change that, right? And the evidence for the latter is, is pretty non-existence. The idea that uh, homophobia is what causes uh, the high transsexual suicide rate. The idea that, you know, oh, if only Well, that's actually really well borne out. The idea that trans people kill themselves due to a lack of support around them or bullying is something that's been borne out in study after study after study, showing that having like a Well, that's... Uh, John Hopkins University disagrees with you because when they had originally implemented the... Uh, the, the surgery for uh, transitioning, they actually pulled it. John Hopkins University no longer offers uh, the transitional surgery because they found that the suicide rate of patients after the surgery had a 20 times percent higher rate than the control group. And that's independent of bullying because I would imagine they received the same amount of bullying before and so after. I'm not familiar. I, I don't know if John Hopkins has pulled the surgery or not, if they have or haven't. I'm, I'm not familiar with why. No but the idea that, it. sure, the idea that trans because people. Because of the suicide rate. Sure, so the idea that trans people kill themselves more after transitioning is not borne out in the evidence. It's just not true. Um, this is a very famous study that Ben Shapiro himself referenced in a debate. The researcher that was in charge of that study, like literally one on Reddit, didn't ask me anything about it and explained why he was taking that. Um, out of context for, for what it actually meant. Like the idea that you could compare the lifetime suicide rates between a group I'm of people that want to transition. I'm not talking about, yeah, I know about this. Yeah, it, so that, 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 that study doesn't prove that, sure. Generally, yeah, right, transitioning is a positive thing for most trans people, but there are other factors that need to be accounted for as well, such as the amount of support you get from friends and family after transitioning can be just as important as transitioning itself. Right, and I'm not study I'm not talking about that study. I'm talking about just the operations within John Hopkins University. The, okay, well, uh, I'm sorry. Even this isn't true. Then I'm sorry. Fuck. I shouldn't. I. I. It's really hard for me to fact check in the middle of the day. But you can actually look at HopkinsMedicine.org right now, and they still offer all these surgeries. You can literally call I'm an appointment right, right now. now. Yeah, surgical services, penile construction, top surgery, vaginal construction. They still do this. Well, because I was going to say the the actual effects of the surgery, such as you know continued dilation, uh, continued medication usage, and these, you don't believe that that could in any way contribute to the numbers. It's purely just a societal ill. The world I'm sees sure. them, and they're so, repulsed. 
I seriously doubt that it's purely any one individual thing. All of these issues, especially something like gender identity, is going to be a really complicated intersection of biological pressure, of personal, emotional, and psychological conditioning, of societal conditioning, of even economic conditioning. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of things that go into this. Um, but yeah, I'm sure that like if we, we can work on what we can control, which is like our societal outlook of trans people, and we can probably help them by making that not such a negative experience, right? So but you don't think the... Continue. Yeah, there's a curiosity um, wherein there's a lot more male to female than female to male. Why do you think that is? Um, I don't know if that's true. Let me check. I'm pretty sure it's true. Like um, female to male, at least for full. Um, yeah. Okay. So it's twelve point nine. Yeah, it's twelve point nine for yeah, one hundred thousand for um male for female to male. It's thirty one point two for male to female. So it's almost three times as much. Yeah, that's true. Um, I I don't know why it is. I'm not sure. That, that could be underlying um, of some biological reality. Like, for instance, I'm pretty sure we all start as females, so um, as embryos. If I may, we I was correct. It. John Hopkins University had actually removed it, but they resumed it in the year 2016. Okay. Well, John Hopkins it, resumed. I'm reading. Let me send you this article. I'll put it sure. In. Well, that's fine. That means that where the current literature is right now is it, it shows that this type of surgery so, is beneficial, right? But that means at one point they had actually removed it. And the reason for it, according to this, is, is the, the prestigious school is finally distancing itself from its anti-trans reputation. So it seems think progress is making it clear the reason why they changed it isn't because of the studies, as you're saying. It's because of the horrible uh, reputation that was assigned to the school with its transphobia. That's, but that's, that's, that's your individual reading. If you read the article that you linked, one of its faculty members, Paul McHugh, has become the face of anti-transgender advocacy, propping up junk science to justify rejecting transgender identities. It could be that this person was actually somebody that what was biased. What is junk science, though? Well, you know, it's like, uh, it's, it's like things that I don't like. It's like, oh, no, it says that there's... Or it might be studies that were done in an unsound manner that other people have reviewed in the literature and have found don't hold up to scrutiny. Okay. And we're, we're not able to delve deep enough into either right now, but I'm looking at the link you sent right now. They do, <clears throat> sorry, they do offer the top surgery now, but it says it requires pharmacy showing at least 12 months of hormone replacement therapy, medical records from your physician care who is most oh, oh my closely God. followed. Oh, hold on. I'm so sorry. Give me, give me one second. No problem. They really do. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Fuck. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm here. Okay. Sorry. Keep going. Hey there. I was just saying it's a good thing we're having this debate because I've been saying everywhere, oh, they no longer offer. No, they do offer it. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> They've changed. I, mm -hmm. I haven't been keeping up. This is this is exciting. That means uh, we're going to see even more child grant drag queens. Um, it says, you know, the days of lot are approaching. You won't know what that means, but like I'm excited for it. Uh, it says, yeah, the pharmacy required 12 months of hormone therapy. Now your medical care physician needs to have a recommendation. So this is all. Yeah, this is recent. At least of 2016, 2018, they've had this criteria. So that's, you know, I guess I can't use that as a source anymore. Okay. I just, I still haven't been convinced that it's society that causes their their maladies. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a really hard one to say, of course, right? We need more data. We just, the, one of the facts of the matter is it's really hard to collect data related to trans people because there's not that many of them. And it's a very new area of science, right? Well, kind of new. So, yeah, I mean, we continue to collect data and then we adjust our our assumptions you know going forward based on how the data pans out right yeah and the difference between uh and i'm not saying by any means that you shouldn't look into the secular studies i do i myself am very interested in it but you know when you look at it from the perspective of the bible these things are already laid out yeah the but again Apostle Paul, we can't really use the bible for secular right like i like so anytime you say i'm not saying this to be disturbing anything right but you understand that me as somebody that's a religious every yes. time you bring up the bible if we did, I, no it would yeah. be you know if we did it would be a theocracy if in congress i'm saying we should pass this because in leviticus 20 that'd be bad yeah. that'd be terrible and you need to understand this this country uh thomas jefferson actually passed a law castrating men who practice sodomy okay uh in Virginia, without ever using a single Bible passage. You can look into this original uh, legislation. He had expert testimony from surgeons, from doctors, basically showing the effects on the rectum and the body as a result of the practice of sodomy. Nothing to do with the Bible. However, we find that it's already mirrored in the Bible. So basically, I'm saying use the Bible as like a starting point, but then look in the natural world, in the actual empirical evidence world, and you can find they often line up. What well, it but is I wouldn't even agree with that law, though. So I don't think that that just because that lines up, I don't like. Oh, well, I'm saying you yeah, at the time, we have this perception that this country was very uh, 
oh, so so religious back in the day. And it was, but it's quite hilarious. When it comes to government, there's more separation of church and state back then there in, there is today. Today, now we have this new religion called humanism that takes precedence over the First Amendment. Now, it doesn't matter whether something is beneficial or, uh, I'm sorry, if something is, is damaging to society, as long as it's for the human rights. Sexual liberation is necessary. We need to have allow children to have sex education in kindergarten and so on and so forth. No matter. The well, we need to allow people to have sex education. I don't know in kindergarten. I don't know if people make that. But yeah, you should probably be well, relatively well informed about sex before you engage in any sexual activity. There's no reason not to be, right? Unless, I mean, theologically, I'm sure you have reasons not to be. Um, well, because, you know, do you know about obscenity? Obscenity laws? Uh, what about sort of like them? things Things that are too vulgar to even say. It's like, basically, if you will, it was the big con clash against the first amendment certain things are just obscene they break the it's like it, the first amendment doesn't cover things that are obscenities like like and when it came to uh, pornography on the internet way back when uh people sidestepped this clause saying pornography should be allowed on the internet because hey it's not uh, it's the first amendment freedom of speech i'm allowed to show a woman having sex with a horse like that's freedom of speech uh the problem with that is it, it actually when it comes to obscenity obscenity has nothing to do with the first amendment like the, these, um, the things that are available on the internet previously weren't available on magazines, VHS tapes, uh, and now children are freely this available to them. This guy is unironically the Bible of a equivalent and of a We're seeing these effects manifest he's in the coming decades. And have more you know, as schools are now accommodating for it, you're saying it's making it better for them. That's pretty fucking like, oh, because metal. Now, Any uh, time yeah, I think it's, I think children should like understand like how their bodies work and stuff. Yeah, I don't think there should be some weird shame around. So that. they need to learn about. <sighs> I don't know, man. It's like I see, you know, the stuff in Steven Universe. You know about that, like gems fusing and stuff. Like that. Yeah, they need to know that it's possible to become both. Like, uh, there's a story in California. Wait, you think where a girl in, came in, home? Wait, wait. Uh, what, what specific parts of like child sex education do you object to? I'm curious. Like, should should kindergartens not learn biology? I'll or? tell you. Yeah. yeah. So what happened is there's a kindergarten girl who came home to her parents crying uh, because she said to her mom and dad, "I don't want to turn into a boy," and because in their kindergarten class they were reading a story that said that one day this boy turned into a girl. And so it's like teaching the children, you're allowed to change. Like, it's okay. Inculcating in their mind that they should. But it's like, that's a decision. It's, if you will, if I really want to get into the science of it, I believe transgenderism is a manifestation of, a, of gynophilia, autogynophilia, the idea of one, a man wanting to have a vagina, like to actually be sexually attractive. It's, it's not something children, before they've gone through puberty, ever have any business learning about or being exposed to. But the thing is, not only are they being exposed to it in, in classrooms, the internet, whether they want to, or their parents don't even have a chance to defend them anymore. It's, it's well, so like you should, everything. you, you, ha you, okay, hold on, hold on. So we can talk about our children with whatever we want, depending on what's taught in school. I don't think it's a crime or horrible thing to just make people aware of the idea of trans people existing, like in, in, in the world. I don't think that's a horrible thing for, for children to learn about. If your child think, is crying that they're going to turn into a girl or boy, it sounds like either the school or the parents are doing a bad job at informing children of like how their gender identity works or anything. Like, I don't think this is a widespread problem. I mean, it might be like one thing, but I mean, like we wouldn't say that there's like a like a massive problem in schools with like I, like kids do a whole bunch of crazy dumb shit. Like, I don't know if I'd go off of one girl right, story. So we that shouldn't she's cater to them. We shouldn't cater. We shouldn't cater to a child who one day is like, "Yeah, I'm a, I'm a girl, a boy." But a that's not like, yeah, children. Like People will maintain these feelings well into adulthood. They put they're putting children on on what is it puberty blockers in in like uh, second or third grade now because they say like, "Yeah, I saw I'm I'm a I'm a boy, I'm a boy," and a girl says, that, "Yeah." I'm and a boy. if they decide if they if their opinions change on that later on, then they can just go off puberty blockers. They can't get a driver's fine. license, but they can permanently change their biology. They're not they permanently changing their biology. They're temporarily holding off on puberty. Um, but like, <sighs> regardless, the, the idea is like you can emotion load it all you want, but we have to look at the outcomes, right? If the outcomes show that going on puberty blockers for a little bit gives somebody a, a right. little bit of a longer chance we, to, to make a decision about what they want to be in the future, then that's okay. It's not a big deal. We do need to look at the outcomes and these children are guinea pigs. We don't have the data to show that, that there's any benefit to it. If you look at Europe and stuff, it, just look at what happened to Sweden. Look at what happened to other nations that have practiced it long, long, uh, much longer than the United States. Uh, Wait, what's happened to them? Positive. What do you mean? What's happened to them? I mean, you just look at how I'm far looking they've at them. gone from how far have they okay. gone? What's wrong with Sweden? You're right. No, I'm not using any criteria. You're right. I'm not using any. Yeah, any, I'm just. What do you mean by that? You're right. This is like when I was saying what's better or worse. Like I like it. It's better. So it's worse in terms of a biblical perspective. I don't have any secular arguments for how it's worse. I apologize. Okay. Uh, but I, I, I would say I, I haven't. I don't have any stats to to go with that. But I, I would say that you know when children are basically inculcated from a young age that there is no difference between man and woman, they'll look at, you know, 
the Bible and say, well, God made male and female. Like, I don't like We're that guy. He doesn't Bible like me. <laughs> and, well, it's and a I, cultural thing. Would you not agree? Would you like, uh, if a parent wants to be religious and they want their child to be religious, the first amendment covers that. Mm -hmm. But now they're being sent to institutions. They're seeing TV shows. They're seeing everything that not just attacks the Bible, but the moral principles of the Bible. If your religion can't hand handle a, a without little... any benefit, well, but arguably there is benefit. People should probably know about trans people. It's probably what are these about. benefits? The benefits. You are said people... that I could I couldn't say anything negative about what happened in Sweden from a secular perspective. So give me the secular benefits. Sure, uh, the secular benefits would be trans people are less likely to kill themselves if the culture or people or friend group or relationships around them are more supportive of who they are. So children knowing that might be more supportive of trans friends if they have them in the future, and then those people would be less likely to kill themselves. That's one potential benefit. Another potential benefit so might I can, be that people, But that can be... But, yeah? I was but, like, that could be disproven because hasn't the, the suicide rate increased while society has only become more and more accepting to these principles? Like, if you consider back in the 80s and stuff, transgenderism was extremely fringe, not at all accepted. Now as we're going more and more for it's only becoming more and I more. Don't, I don't think suicide rates have increased. Um, and I know that like almost every study that goes over like the outcomes of trans people are generally more positive when the people around them are supportive. Um, I'll throw one of those in here for you. This is from 2016. Oh, from, okay. From PubPub. Yeah, okay. So it's the suicide attempt rate among society. transgender persons ranges from 32 to 50% across the country's gender based victimization, discrimination, bullying, violence, being rejected by the family, friends, and community, harassment by intimate partners, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, are the major risk factors that influence yeah. suicidal behavior among transgender persons. So it seems like maybe if people learn about it at an earlier age, then those risk factors decrease and trans people don't kill themselves as much. So purely education. That's it. There's no, there's no biological component to it. It's just like if their minds change, if they just learn. There's no innate disgust to that. Someone well, there, feel the to. innate doesn't really exist, right? Like, what, what, what do you mean when we say, like, everything expresses itself in some sort of cultural context? Nothing exists outside of that in a vacuum. So, yeah, of course, like, whatever biology you have is going to be right. expressed. Within Spoken some... like an atheist, exactly. Yeah. Well, no, this is just... Nothing, just here, man, man, just us here, here, what we see. Cells, atoms, that's all we are. Well, no, uh, I, I mean, like, even if you're religious, like, like cells or genes or people or whatever don't exist in a vacuum. There's some greater cultural context. Even if you're religious, you must acknowledge that. Yeah, but if, if you're religious, you understand that there's a moral principle that exists completely outside of all of that. Yeah, but that's your problem, is that if you're drawing those moral principles from a dimension that we can't talk about or analyze, it doesn't really do much for us, right? We can't, like... Right. It's, it's like an axiom, kind of like in physics, like nothing goes faster than the speed of light. It's an assumed truth. So basically the entire, uh, if you will, the Ten Commandments are my axiom. Mm -hmm. Nothing goes against it. It's just the truth. And that first commandment, thou shall have no other gods before me, you mess with that first one, all other, all the other nine fall on their face. They're all done. You understand? Because it's the character of God that manifests don't stealing, don't kill, don't uh, cheat on your wife, uh, don't lie. All of those things come from the character of that God from the first commandment. And now once we've gotten rid of that first uh, commandment, we got rid of that God, that God is replaced with Neil deGrasse Tyson, with Ben Shapiro, with whatever. And now you just say, oh, well, you know, as long as people just have the right, uh, what is it, education, they'll realize that it's okay to have polyamorous relationship. It's okay to do these things, even though like these kind of things like violate the seventh commandment. But, uh, you know, and transgenderism violates the sixth commandment, thou shalt not kill. You're killing yourself by having such a surgery, by, by taking such uh, pills. And I'm not talking about like literally killing yourself slowly, like you're you're changing your body's biology. You are harming yourself. You're fighting All right, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay. I have to, um, I love you and I love this conversation, but I, I do have to leave in a few minutes. Um, sure. I don't, I can't respond to any of the biblical arguments because I'm just not religious, right? We would have sure. to have a more no, fundamental yeah, yeah, conversation yeah, yeah. about that. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's um, true. Pull it, pull in it back a little bit. Um, earlier you said that like, um, puberty blockers don't have any negative or, um, impactful events on, um, a person. Well, I didn't and say they, none. They... I'm, just, I'm saying that the, the only two, I was going to say this against Coach Red Pill earlier. The, the only two that I'm aware of is they might have an adverse impact on bone density. And I think height growing up, those are the two that I'm aware of, but like in terms of making your dick smaller, I've never heard of that. No, they do have an impact on testicular and penile length, uh, which can it, have it would completely ravage the endocrine system. Like, all right, we'll continue. Yeah. So. Yeah. Unfortunately, it Unfortunately, yeah, I only have a couple more minutes. I cannot yeah, get Broly. Get... Yeah. yeah. I'm hearing myself again, but okay. Um... Oh, sorry. It's my bleeding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Catboy Cambi is uh, hes still on his way here. I don't know. Maybe you'd be interested in talking to him some other time. He's, um, yeah. 
heavily associated with Nick Fuentes and has a worldview that he basically surmises as exterminationist. Okay. So I don't know. There might be some interesting... Uh, Hit me up on that guy next time I'll do it. You can just schedule these whenever I'm doing a lot of debates now because I'm taking a week break off of shit League of Legends, so I've got all the time in the world. So <laughs> email me. We can set something up if you want, okay? All, All right, right thanks for this. Yeah, this we could we could do it a lot later too than than tonight because uh, you know, well, it's not even night for you yet, seeing as you're on uh, Pacific Coast time. Yeah, no, Dude, this, this is like, great. This is like yeah. lunchtime now. It's great. All right, so, well, I, I, definitely, yeah, no, I, I definitely enjoyed this. Uh, highly recommend. You know, just snort a line of Adderall, read the entire Bible. Life will change, <laughs> right, man? I'll see you later. Okay, okay. have fun. I love okay. you guys. I'll see you guys later. Okay. Thanks, Leo. See you yeah, later, later, man. You have a good day. Peace out. <laughs> Is that true? Are you talking shit while I'm not in the room? And now you're running away when I ask you a question?